Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So in my update videos, three of the main questions I get about the senolytics I take are what are senolytics? Why do you only take them three days a week? And where can I get hold of senolytics? So enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's answer those three questions. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Brady Hartman where he references the work of James L. Kirkland, MD and PhD, and Professor Judith Campisi, PhD, both leading researchers in the field of anti-aging and senolytics. And there are links in the description below to the studies and articles I used to put this presentation together. So what exactly are senolytics? Well, our bodies are home to damaged cells. These are called senescent cells also known as zombie cells. Cellular senescence is one of the hallmarks of aging. These senescent or damaged cells build up naturally as we age and unfortunately cause inflammation and disease. They are believed to cause many of the chronic diseases of aging, such as arthritis, type two diabetes, heart disease, aging skin, and perhaps even cancer. Senolytics are the compounds that we can use to help clear these senescent or damaged zombie cells out of our bodies. So what causes senescent cells? Over the decades, a variety of hazards attack our bodies, including toxins and radiation. Add to this that our cells have a limited lifespan in that they can only divide around 50 times and each division causes a shortening of our telomeres. When a cell has reached the end of its useful life, it's programmed to self-destruct using a process called apoptosis. Unfortunately, some of these non-functioning cells refuse to commit suicide. The body's immune system tries to clear out these zombie cells, but our immune system weakens with age and cannot destroy all of the senescent cells. Senescent cells are not dead, but they do churn out buckets of pro-inflammatory compounds that are released into the surrounding tissue and into our bloodstream. Professor Judith Campisi, PhD, from the Buck Institute for Research on Aging said, if chemists can come up with drugs that can kill senescent cells in humans, we think this is gonna revolutionize modern medicine. No longer would you have a pill for your blood pressure, and a pill for your glaucoma, and a pill to stabilize your heart, and a pill to improve your kidney function. You'd have a pill that would hit multiple problems that affect the elderly. It's very unlikely that these are drugs you would have to take every day, just when enough senescent cells had accumulated again. Dr. James L. Kirkland, MD and PhD of the Mayo Clinic said, senolytics have the potential to revolutionize medicine in the near future. The introduction of effective senolytics or agents that target fundamental aging processes into clinical practice could be transformative. These drugs may be critical to increasing health span and delaying, preventing or alleviating the multiple chronic diseases that account for the bulk of morbidity, mortality and health costs in developed and developing societies. Dr. Kirkland added that senolytics hold the potential to be the universal anti-aging treatment. Rather than preventing the diseases of aging one by one, a single medicine could potentially prevent or delay them all. They could also delay or treat the geriatric syndromes, including sarcopenia, frailty, immobility, and cognitive impairment, as well as age-related loss of physiological resilience in a way not imaginable until recently. Dr. Kirkland identified a list of the most well-known senolytic compounds, included these listed below. Please feel free to pause the video and read them in full. Note that I've highlighted quercetin and fisetin. With regard to protocols, Dr. Kirkland added, senolytics do not have to be continuously present to exert their effort. Brief disruption of pro-survival pathways is adequate to kill senescent cells. Thus, 
Senolytics can be effective when administered intermittently. For example, dacitinib and quercetin have an elimination half-life of a few hours. Yet a single short course alleviates effects of leg radiation for at least seven months. The advantages of periodic dosing are substantial. Dr. Kirkland points out the advantages of intermittent administration include less opportunity to develop side effects and the feasibility of administering senolytic drugs during periods of relatively good health and less risk of off-target effects caused by continuous exposure to drugs. Dr. Kirkland closed by saying that senolytics have the opportunity to transform medicine from the current emphasis of treating the conditions of aging one by one to treating aging as a single disease. Senolytics may prevent or delay chronic diseases as a group instead of one at a time in pre-symptomatic or at-risk individuals. Two of the compounds that were on Dr. Kirkland's list and that I currently take are available for purchase from RenewBiscience and DoNotAge.org. From RenewBiscience, quercetin is available at 35 cents per milligram and fisetin is available at 86 cents per milligram. From DoNotAge.org, quercetin will cost you 13 cents per milligram and their fisetin is 35 cents per milligram. So it appears Initially, the do not age.org is quite a bit cheaper than a Renew by Science. But let's take a look at Renew by Science's liposomal technology and see if that actually makes a difference. So although Renew by Science's products appear to be more expensive initially, their liposomal administration method has been shown to allow more bioavailability in both quercetin and fisetin. So the dose you actually need is going to be lower. And there's a link in the description below to the liposomal technology information. Let's take a look at what the daily dose will actually cost you. For Renew by Science, quercetin will cost you 53 cents per day and for fisetin, 72 cents per day. With the 10% My NMN discount code, this then becomes for quercetin, 48 cents per day and 65 cents a day for fisetin. For do not age.org, Quercetin will cost you $1.06 a day and Fisetin will cost you $2.83 per day. With a 10% My Enemy discount code, this comes down to $0.95 cents per day for Quercetin and $2.55 per day for Fisetin. So taking into account the improved bioavailability of liposomal technology, Renew by Science appear to have the most cost-effective daily dose option. Another factor to bear in mind is at the time of making this video, Renew by Science posts third-party test certificates for purity and they both show a purity level of 100%. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, as we know, David Sinclair is now taking quercetin and fisetin as senolytics, but unfortunately at the present we don't know what his dosing protocols are. I follow Dr. Kirkland's recommendation of intermittent administration in that I take 2,400 milligrams of each on the first, second and third of each month. Let me know in the comments below, do you take a senolytic? Um, and if you don't, are you considering taking a senolytic? Bearing in mind all the interest and information that's now available about them and also maybe because of the results of this video.